Hey everybody, just picking up my new 208 Warrior from Tim at Spellman's. Hey Tim, I'll tell you what, you know what, it took a little bit to get the boat, but I'm I'm super excited. Yeah, you should be, man. They're hard to hard to come by right now. They certainly are. Yeah. You know what, the 208 to me is like a perfect boat for me for guiding because, you know, it's got the jump seats in it, so I don't have to run extra seats in the back, and I've got a lot more floor space which is kind of nice because a lot of times I'm running, you know, be, I'm running three to four people. And the nice part about that is again, having that room there. So true. You got plenty of room in this boat and the, just the front bow size is huge. The rough water capabilities, super boat for anything you're gonna do. You ain't kidding. You know, you're located right here on the Fox River in Oshkosh. And I'll tell you, it's a great place. If you want to take a warrior boat for a ride, Winnebago is probably one of the, because it's so shallow, one of the roughest bodies of water when there's any kind of wind blowing out there. And when you're looking at really coming in and spending the amount of money that it costs to buy a new boat, really taking it for a ride is everything. And that's what I think about, you know, a warrior is that that's what sells the, the boat because no doubt, in my opinion, it is the best riding boat there is. Hey Tim, let's talk a little bit more. Now you've been a warrior dealership for how long now? It's about three years. Okay. Three yep. Years. And what has been your favorite part about selling the Warrior brand? Ah, uh, they're so I put easy you on to the sell. spot. <laughs> no, it truly. They're so easy to sell. They just really sell themselves. When a guy's looking at a Warrior, he already knows what he wants and what he's looking for. He pretty much knows what it is, and just word of mouth is is all we have to do. They go out as fast as I can get them. But if you do need a test ride, I have plenty of pro staffers that are more than happy to take you out for a test ride. Yeah, that's a great part. So if you're thinking about a brand new boat, definitely come take it for a ride. And no doubt, make sure you guys come in and check out Tim here at Spellman's Marine in Oshkosh. Hey Tim, awesome job rigging my boat. I appreciate everything like always. Hey, you and I need to get back out fishing yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, last time I went fishing, he took all my fish off <laughs> and baited my hooks. <laughs> it might not, well, if you keep rigging my boat and taking care of me like you are, I have no problem with that. Hey, thanks again, I appreciate you that. Too. Thank again, you, everybody, you know what? I'm super excited about my brand new V208 Warrior, you know, with the 300 Mercury on there. Best part about owning a Warrior is being in the Warrior family. So, well guys, let's go on the water and try to catch some fish. Woo! You two could be brothers. I'm just telling you, this is it's scaring me. You don't have a beautiful wife though, do you? No. Right. Smart guy. <laughs> I'm going to do today, since obviously Thomas does not get a lot of chances to fish, he's actually getting his license right now online, is I'm going to give Thomas a crankbait, let him throw a crankbait. I'm going to be throwing live bait. Uh, I think it's a lot easier, obviously, to teach somebody how to uh, correctly work a crankbait versus having the right feel um, when it comes to throwing a jig in a crawler, knowing if it's a rock or if it's a weed. Uh, or if it's a sheep head or a perch or a walleye. Using a seven to seven and a half foot mags rod uh, with some type of super braid with a, a short fluorocarbon leader is gonna be perfect. As far as you can, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna kinda like, this is how fast I'm moving it, and once in a while I'll give it a little twitch like that. You know, like three or three times on the way in, give it a little twitch. Just see how medium, and they're just gonna jump right on it. Now something I just thought of is, as this is the first uh, voyage in this vessel, which is an incredible vessel, um, is that you, by law, are supposed to have your kill switch hooked up at all times. Here's your kill switch right here. This gets pushed up into here, your tether. This is supposed to be around your wrist at all times when the boat is in motion. So what happens if you uh, hit something got, uh, you know, uh, had a heart attack, whatever happens, that what happens is you're gonna fall back and you're gonna go out of the boat and it's gonna kill the motor, just like that. You know, obviously this is, uh, like we were saying, this is the first uh, trip in the new boat here. So breaking the engine in is very important. So I go between 2,800 RPMs and 3,200 RPMs. 
definitely braking on any engine, doesn't matter what brand it is, uh, is very important. The other big part is, I don't know if anybody has noticed this at all, gas is $4.50 a gallon, you know? So the days of like doing this, right, they're long gone. Days of doing this, yeah, which is kind of nice, you know, because when you get in your 50s, it's really not as important how fast you get there, it's that you get there and spend the time and utilize the time when you're on the spot and know the things that you know by utilizing them. Hopefully this is all making sense to you because sometimes it doesn't make sense to me, but utilizing them so you're not driving around the whole lake because this lake is like 11 and a half miles wide by 34 to 36 long, right? So that could consume a lot of fuel, right? And did I tell you guys? Fuel is 457 a gallon today. You know, the big part too is that we just came off a spot that had basically just sand on it, a little bit of gravel in there, but the water was too clear. Uh, it's this time of year with the water, you know, being everything being so late, um, we get a little bit of warm weather, then it cools down. The water temperature today is about 68. Um, until that gets into that mid 70 degree range, these fish love to sit up on the sand. So anytime the sun is out, uh, the fish will shift up because that's where the warmer water is going to be. But it was too clear, uh, had a couple bites in there, but that was it. So what I did is I moved this into an area where there's a bunch of weeds. Obviously, the, it's still shallow water. We're pitching about four to six feet of water. But the big thing is the weed cover in here, and that's where these fish are going to sit. Uh, the water is a little bit more stained in here right now, too, so that helps out. Um, so really just kind of watching your surroundings is the biggest thing. What I am pitching is I'm pitching a seven foot Mags Custom Rod. This is a, a medium action with a fast tip on it. Uh, I'm pitching, I've got uh, eight pound fluorocarbon on here with an eighth ounce jig today, uh, just half of a crawler, and I'm casting a, a super braid on here. Um, the biggest thing is try to get the distance and get the feel so I can feel uh, the difference in what the bottom is, if it's sand or if it's gravel or if it's weeds, if it's a perch biting or if it's a walleye or a sheephead. That's the, part, the great part about using a super braid um, line so you can feel exactly what you're, you know, I always look at it this way is that with the line, if I can feel everything, it goes to my brain, which is like I'm visualizing everything through my feel of the rod right there. So having a good rod is really important too, and that's why I love the Meg's Custom Rods. Real nice walleye. Nice, nice fish right there. Woo, I'm loving that. So what I do is I kind of look at what the weather's like. Now what happened yesterday, we had winds that were almost 30 miles an hour out of the south. When you start looking at wind out of the south that strong, obviously it's gonna dirty the water up, especially on this end of the lake right here. And that's where I'm looking at. I know that obviously dirty water or stained water is the key to catching fish on this system. And obviously warm water. You know, so I like to get into these bays this time of year where the water's obviously a little shallower for sure and the temperatures are warmer. That's where these fish are gonna migrate to. And like I was saying with the first spot that I went to, the water was a little bit too clear. So I moved over to the next bay, which has some weeds in it. And obviously it's a little bit bigger bay. So uh, the wind was able to get in here and stir up the water yesterday. Uh, today we got a light uh, west wind, so in another day or two this is going to be clear again in here and it's not going to be as good. When you start thinking about walleyes and you start thinking really the advancements of the electronics, the advancements of all social media, just uh, the way things are going, more people obviously fishing, um, really a three fish limit is a great way to go because what it does, obviously it takes down the number of fish that are being kept. But the other part is it makes you think more about keeping the right fish. Like this fish is in that 16 to 17 inch range. Perfect fish, you know, where if it's a five fish limit, a lot of times guys were keeping a lot, of, I hate to say this, but especially on this system, they were keeping a lot of 12 to 13 inch walleyes. And there's really not much meat on a fish like this, but they figure, hey, I can keep five of them. So, you know, I'm gonna have enough for a meal. Oh, that is so cool, big, small, jeez. 
They are fighters. I knew it had great head shake to it. You know, as a kid growing up on this system, you did not catch a lot of smallmouth. So that's really something that has, has changed over the years. And I know some people do kill them and eat them, um, but I'm not much of a bass guy as far as killing bass especially smallmouth, they're absolutely awesome fighters. They're just a cool fish, you know? I look at it, if you're gonna keep something and eat it, uh, myself personally, I'll keep a walleye, a perch, a bluegill, uh, I'll let the smallmouth go. But they are absolutely, as far as fighting fish, doesn't get any better. Using side imaging, it doesn't matter really what brand it is. I personally think right now Hummingbird is the leader as far as side imaging uh, when it comes to live view or live scope, um, you know, or mega live. Um, definitely, I think Garmin is still probably has the upper advantage on that. But using your electronics really helps you try to find fish and gives you the confidence when you obviously come in, you see all these fish that you're marking that when you can get them to bite and really knowing like these are probably sheephead right here, this is probably a walleye, really knowing the shapes of your side imaging too. Again, be able to go into a spot and be able to catch these fish, again, helps you relate that and gives you more confidence in what you're seeing on your locator. You know, when I'm typically fishing a body of water that's shallow basin like the Winnebago system, uh, or up in the you know Green Bay, the southern part. Most of the time, when I'm using my side imaging, I very seldom have it over 65 feet. You know, I want to keep it in a little bit tighter. It gives me a better signal too, and I can really tell a lot. There's a lot more detail because I'm not drawing that span way out, and I can really tell if they're fish or if it's weeds or if it's rock, and I can tell what kind of fish for the most part. I'm seeing on my side imaging. Hey, I'll tell you, I had to do it today is that I fished the other day with the, the legend himself, Lightning Lance, you know, and I put some bananas in his boat and got, you know, we met him at the parking ride, put some bananas in there and uh, all of a sudden we're pulling away and I look, he threw the dang bananas out in the parking lot. So if anybody sees them bananas, it was definitely Lance the Lightning that put them there, you know. He is one of them kind of guys like Tommy Hicks that they think it's a curse to have bananas. You'll never catch a fish. Well, we've got three nice wallies in the live well. We caught a bunch of sheephead, caught a smallmouth. Thomas caught some, some largemouth. And guess what? I got bananas in the boat. So, banana? Banana for the new guy? Banana for Thomas? Banana for me. Now this is, this is a fish that is very, very, very common on this system. This is about a 13 inch walleye right here. I'm gonna let this one go. But this is what we're talking about. You know, a lot of people like to keep these small walleyes. And you know, again, going back to what I was saying before about the three fish limit. You know, back when it was five, you know, the people were like, hey, I'm gonna keep five of these and that's gonna be the deal. Now that's a three fish limit, unless it's really a tough day and you're really struggling, I'm gonna still let them go. But, you know, a lot of people are letting these fish go and that's the key part right there is not just always letting the big fish go, but letting the small fish go too. One thing we really got to look forward to and, and it'll start going here pretty soon is uh, perch fishing. Like last winter was some of the best perch fishing that we had in probably 20 some years. And like I said, our perch population right now is probably at one of the highest points that it's ever been. So we should have a really good open water season on the perch. Another good fish. I mean, that's right in that, I don't know, 16. Let's measure this one. Don't use some plastered tape measure on the side of your boat because they do shrink. Just buy yourself a good boat bump. This is obviously a bump board and this is the law. The law is this. When a game warden comes up to you and he says, well, I don't think that fish is whatever. Let's just say most places are 15. Like I fish peat and wall a lot, 15 to 20 inches or one over 28. So this is the rule. You gotta bump the nose of the fish and you squeeze the tail. And when you squeeze the tail together, you're gonna get a little bit more out of it. And see how, like when I first measured that fish, how he was over that 17 line. Now look at how much this fish is tensed up. And here's the other part too, and this is kind of amazing. Like when you flip a fish from one side to another, sometimes you will actually gain a little bit. I don't know if you call it P 
peaked. It did something. Hey, but you know what I did with this compartment? This is dedicated to, guess what? Tevel Tevel. I don't know if it came out what end. Well, I know what end it came out, so I'm not sure if it's called one thing or another. If it, the question is, this is, you guys, please help me out a little bit. Is this called number one or number two? Built for fishermen, built by fishermen. Um, really, that says it all. It's the family here. It's, it's not a big, big conglomerate. It's a family. They treat you, you feel like you're in a family, you know. When you put those two together, an amazing product and amazing people, it's just the type of company you want to be involved with. Not only because of just the great boats, but because of the camaraderie that the Warrior family has. The customer service is amazing. Uh, they never leave you hanging. So come join the Warrior family. Okay, everybody, Shotgun and Kitchen here, Leary, lunchtime today. Thanks, Leary, for the panfish. I have crappie, bluegill, and perch here. You guys, you don't always have to deep fry your fish. I'm gonna show you a quick way to put it in the pan. I'm gonna cut them up. I got them all filleted already. You're looking good. Got some onion, throw it in the pan. And then just as before, they're almost done. You'll throw a little white wine in there and simmer it. So I get the onions going first. I got a little butter in the frying pan. I don't season my fish till I flip them the one time. Put the butter here for you. Get them caramelized a little bit. Inside down first, leave the skin side up. And you'll see on the outside, everybody, See how the fish is turning colors on the outside? I'm gonna let it go just a little bit longer, then I'm gonna flip them over. Turn my heat down a little bit. Cilantro, can't go wrong with paprika. A little salt and pepper. This is all a taste, everybody. Do what you wanna do. I mean, you can do this stuff after it's out of the pan too. Now crank up the heat. White Zinfandel, cheap wine. But when you got white fish like this, white wine. Don't use the record, it's gonna turn your fish colors. Get it ready. I got her hot. Wine's going in. Now covered up. You can use any fish. Uh, walleye, northern. Here you go, folks. Just a little over about two minutes. And look at how delicious that looks. So if you want to separate your fish, we got my crappies over here, bluegill over here, perch over there. Leroy right lunchtime, white wine. Cilantro, salt, pepper, paprika, simmered in a frying pan. What you were doing before is you were throwing a crankbait and you got that pattern down pretty good and you caught a few fish doing it, one really nice walleye. But the key obviously is live bait today, you know? And a lot of it is because we're in these weeds. Uh, we're fishing a lot of coontail today and that is probably one of the primary weeds on Lake Winnebago. On calm days like today, I definitely love to work weeds. And the key to working weeds is obviously getting right down in them. Um, so I'm using a small jig, an eighth ounce jig, and a half a crawler, always a half a crawler. And some people say, what's better, the head or the tail? Because you're obviously using just half of it. I like the head, but I think they're both just uh, as good as each other. We're gonna go through the very tip of whatever end we're using. This is a full crawler right now. And then what I do is I bend it around and I'm gonna break it off right about there. So obviously when you work the wind, you want to be able to let that wind drift that crawler down across there. So here's something that we've talked about this a lot. You really, spot lock is probably one of the most unbelievable things that in the fishing world that's come up, they've come up with in years. Um, it just, it's very convenient. I really watch what I'm doing and try to be able to, I get up ahead and try to either cast ahead if the wind's not too strong or go up ahead and then kind of drift back in with the spot lock. Don't ever just drive on them and don't ever just like go up with your, with your Minn Kota or with your trolling motor and spot lock right tight on these fish because it will spook these fish. Look at the torque on the rod right now, everybody. See how much it's torqued over, right? And that, and that jig, that jig is in my skin right there, but it's not pedantry. And that's what's happening with a fish. It's a snap, you, your wrist, you snap that wrist like that. That's a sharp poke, and that's gonna, that's gonna penetrate the, the roof of a, the, the mouth of whatever walleye, sheephead, whatever you were, was biting on your jig right there. Nice cat. You know what, I'm gonna keep this cat because it's a perfect eating size. And I'll tell you, here is a big tip and this, it'll be this week's tip of the week from our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. 
A couple things about catfishing. I love the catfish. I think they are good fish to eat, um, but what I do is I like to eat cats before they spawn. Their diet is totally different. The water's a little bit cooler too. You really make sure that you want to bleed them out. And that really makes a big difference as far as how these cats, especially these channel cats, taste. So I'll do it about five or 10 minutes before I go in. And I basically will clean a catfish the same way that I clean a walleye. And I'll show you guys exactly how to clean them. They're super easy. And that definitely is this week's tip of the week. Again, brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Hey everybody, we want to thank you guys for joining us this week. Hope you guys learned a bunch about how to fish shallow water. No doubt Lake Winnebago is the largest inland lake in the state. It's a great body of water. Fishing these shallow bays, fishing the weeds, fishing sand, you know what, it's a great way to catch a lot of walleyes, but it's also a great way to just to catch a lot of fish. Like always, wanna thank all of our military men and women for the great service that they give this country, along with all of the firefighters, paramedics, and of course, all of our law enforcement agents. No doubt we are still living in the greatest country in the world, and damn it, let's keep it that way. Hey, and remember, it's still a great day to be alive. And Thomas, let's go back and get some work done. Woo! You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Number one, I gotta go number one or I went number two. You tell me that. Why is Thomas back there pouting? Dude, you caught your limit, so why are you pouting? Right, don't pout. Don't shout, don't pout. And obviously then you wouldn't have that line all over your body. What am I saying? We're not gonna say that anymore, right? You're not saying anything, Thomas. <laughs>